Hello, International. Nice to see you. I've been asked by several people if we can apply negative harmony to modes. Yes, we can. And when we do, something very interesting happens. In fact, we can see exactly why negative harmony is called negative and not, for instance, inverted harmony. Now, I'm not going to re-explain everything about negative harmony. You can find it in my other videos on it. You can find, in fact, the playlist about all the videos on negative harmony on the link on the top right of this video. Here, I'm just going to say again that negative harmony essentially involves flipping the notes of the key around so that the first note of the key becomes the fifth note of the key and vice versa, and all the other notes change accordingly. Here you see how the note flip around in the key of A. In this video, I'm also not going to explain everything about modes. There's lots to be said about modes, but I'm going to introduce a tool to understand mode called the order of brightness. This tool is part of the core system of my course Master of the Modes, which is the course where I explain everything that is to know about modes. And in this video, I'm going to explain you only the initial 1% of what there is to know about the order of brightness. And for the remaining 99%, just check out the course Master of the Modes. The basic idea here is to take all the seven modes of the major scale and write all of them, but from the same root. That is, I'm going to write A Ionian, A Dorian, A Phrygian, a Lydian, A Mixolydian, A Aeolian, and A Locrian. So I have all the modes from the same root, and now I can see the difference between those modes. Once I've done that, I want to check what is the relative brightness of those modes. How do I do that, and what is the brightness of a mod? Well, here I can count how many sharps there are in each mode. As you see, A Ionian has three sharps, A Dorian has only one sharp. A Phrygian, in fact, has one flat. Now, a flat here we count as negative sharp, so we have minus one sharps in A Phrygian. In Lydian, I have four sharps. In A Mixolydian, I have two sharps. In A Aeolian, I have no sharps or flats, so I have a zero. And in A Locrian, I have two flats, so minus two sharps. Once I've seen this, I order those modes again from the one with the most sharps to the one with the most flats. So my order changes this way. Now I have A Lydian with the most sharps, then A Ionian, A Mixolydian, A Dorian, a Aeolian, A Phrygian, A Locrian. Lydian is the brightest mode because it has the most sharps, and Locrian is the darkest mode because it has the most flats. All the other modes are shades in between the brightest and the darkest. When I say bright and dark here, I actually mean that the lower you go in the order of brightness, the darker is the sound of the mode and the higher you go in the order of brightness, the brightest is the sound of the mode. That is, darker modes tend to sound sadder, more haunted, depressed, etc., or in general not happy, and brightest modes tend to sound happier, elated, or even frantic, with a higher energy charge, if you want, to their sound. Here, it's hard to explain these in words, so I think the metaphor of bright and dark works really well to describe that sound. Of course, you can make this comparison meaningfully only if everything else is the same. That is, if you play the same song in Lydian or in Ionian or in Mixolydian or in Locrian, if you want, and you keep everything else, you keep the rhythm, you keep the timber, you keep the, the texture of the piece, etc., etc. If you keep everything else the same, then the song will sound brighter or darker. In real music, of course, everything is not equal. So, of course, some of the lower mode can sound brighter because other uh, factors like rhythm or timber or speed or energy or dynamic, it's different and make one mode sound brighter or darker. But everything else being the same, this is how those modes sound. 
Writing modes this way in the order of brightness has many advantages, and there are many observations you can do in this order of brightness that show you exactly how to understand and how to use modes. Again, here we have time only for 1% of what there is to know about the order of brightness, so I'm just making you notice how two modes close by in the order of brightness always differ only by one note. That is, for instance, Lydian A, Lydian and A, Ionian only have these notes of difference here, and all the other notes are the same. Then A, Ionian and A, Mixolydian have only this note of difference, and all the other notes are the same, and so on and so forth. Of course, there is much more to know about that, but this just gives you an idea on how powerful is this order of brightness, if nothing else, to remember the modes and have an idea what you can do with them. Now, why am I explaining you all this? After all, this video is about negative harmony, right? So why am I explaining all this about modes to you? Well, let's see what happens if we apply negative harmony to the order of brightness. Again, this is how the notes get exchanged in the key of A. So if I take the A Ionian mode, which as we know is just the A major scale, and I apply the negative harmony transformation, what I get is this. I have to transform the scale note by note, so the A note becomes an E, the B note becomes a D, the C sharp note becomes a natural C, the D note becomes a B note, the E becomes an A, the F sharp becomes a G, and the G sharp becomes an F. So I obtain A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is the A Aeolian scale. And of course, if I take the A Aeolian scale and I flip everything again through negative harmony, I get the A Ionian scale back. So the A Ionian and the A Aeolian scale are conjugated, they are connected by negative harmony, one becomes the other, they are their mirror image of each other under negative harmony. What happens to the other modes? Well, let's take the Lydian scale, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp. Well, what happens there? Again, A becomes E, B becomes D, C sharp becomes C natural, D sharp, which is the note of difference there, becomes an, a B flat, E becomes A, F sharp becomes G, G sharp becomes F, and what I get is the A Phrygian scales. So in this case, it's Lydian and Phrygian being mirror images of each other. And of course, if I take the A Phrygian scale and apply negative harmony again, I get the A Lydian scale back. What happened with Mixolydian? Well, Mixolydian is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. So again, A becomes E, B becomes D, C sharp becomes natural C, D becomes B, E becomes A, F sharp becomes G, and G becomes F sharp. So now I get the a Dorian scale. So Mixolydian and Dorian are connected, and of course, yes, if I apply negative harmony again on Dorian, I get Mixolydian back. So I'm going to ignore Locrian for the moment, and I focus on the other six modes, which I call the six usable modes. The six usable modes in the order of brightness get reverse. That is, literally, under negative harmony, the brighter modes become the darker modes, and the darker modes become the brightest mode. This is exactly like it works in a photographic negative. The brighter areas in the picture are the darkest area in the negative, and vice versa, the darkest area in the picture are the brightest areas in the negative. So in this case, looking at the order of brightness and noticing how negative harmony flips brightness and darkness, the name negative harmony is very appropriate, and in fact it's more appropriate than my own suggestion of calling these the inverted harmony. Now what happened to Locrian? Well, Locrian is technically excluded from all these for two reasons, but they both boil down to the fact that it does not have a perfect fifth. The first thing is that it's actually pretty hard 
to establish a song and make it sound Locrian. Now, there is a debate going on on this, and some people believe they identified songs that actually work in Locrian. Let's say that didn't convince me. I still think that it's very hard to establish Locrian as an independent mod and make it actually sound the way you make the other mods sound. The other reason is that, of course, if you apply negative harmony to Locrian, something strange happens. Since there is not a perfect fifth, when you flip it around, the new scale is not gonna have the right root. In fact, if I flip around all the notes of A Locrian following negative harmony, I don't obtain a mod in A, but what I obtain is in fact equivalent or enharmonic to either A sharp or B flat Locrian. So it's, if you want, another Locrian scale, a half step above the original Locrian scale, it has a different root, so it doesn't belong to the order of brightness. This is another indication that Locrian is different than the other modes and doesn't really behave like all the other modes. As you can see, a tool like the order of brightness allows us to see exactly what negative harmony does to modal scales. This is but one possible use of the order of brightness, and as I was saying, this is just 1% of what you can do with it. To know more about the modes and the order of brightness, and how you can use the order of brightness and use the modes to play them on your guitar and make your music, I really suggest you have a look at my course Master of the Mods. This is a complete video course on the topic of scales and mods that cover everything you need to know in order to play the scales on your guitar, to use them, and especially to improvise using them over any kind of chord progression. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard, there are no piano example, no theory only example, everything is done on your fretboard so you can use immediately everything that you learn. If you want to really master your modes and your scales and learn how to improvise with them, I totally recommend you click on the link on the top right and check out Master of the Mods. If you like this video, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell, otherwise YouTube will not tell you when I put up a new video. And please, if you have any comment, feedback, suggestion, write them down in the comments, I love reading from you. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicDuty4Guitar.com, and until next time, enjoy.